Hello students, welcome to our third unit, Design in Business. Earlier in this course, we discussed some design principles, the principle of proximity, the principle of alignment, the principle of repetition, and the principle of contrast. And we use these principles when we worked with poster design. Now we're going to switch over and we're going to talk about another tool that we can use in presentation and in design. And this is Microsoft PowerPoint. You might be wondering, why are we using PowerPoint and not using Google Slides? Well, the reason is that PowerPoint is a very powerful program. It is also used by 90% of businesses in the world today. And so it's great for you to use, be able to use PowerPoint, learn how to do it properly. Google Slides is a very limited version of PowerPoint. It does not have near the features, nor the capacity, nor the ability that you can find in PowerPoint. And so as we go through these lessons, we're going to learn a bit more about it. Before we do that, First, I want to show you a PowerPoint presentation and show you some of the mistakes that people commonly make. So we have a presentation here called quite possibly the world's worst PowerPoint presentation ever. And this is a demonstration of what not to do when you're creating and using PowerPoint slideshows. Please go to our Edsby page and download the worksheet that accompanies this PowerPoint with the same title. And throughout this PowerPoint, there is one slide that shows a common error. I would like you to write down what you think the error is. The next slide will discuss a little bit about what that error is, and it will either confirm that you're right in your guess, or it will deny you. So, and then you can write, fill in the proper answer. So let's get started with that here. And here is a guide or a slide that shows the guide to use this presentation. Again, watch the slideshow gaze at the horrible examples of bad slide design and presentation. And then on the slide, take a guess as to what might be the horrible example, what actually is the bad thing that is in this design or the bad part of it. Write this down in your worksheet, flip to the next slide, and then read the hints and tips that follow the examples to avoid making the similar mistakes when you make your PowerPoint presentations. So what could be the problem here? We have a title, we have some text, we have a background uh, slide, a background image, which matches our title. What do you think could be the problem? Please write it down. If you guessed too much text and the font is too small, you're absolutely correct. Do not put large blocks of text in your presentation. Emphasize the main points. PowerPoint is a multimedia tool. You can embed videos. You can put pictures on your slideshows. You don't need to write down what you're going to say word for word on your slide. Your audience can read it a lot faster than you can. So that's the first problem, too much text. Second problem is that the font is far too small. If you're back in the audience, you can't see what this is about. So try to use a large font, at least 30 points or larger when you're creating a slide. And remember the ratio of text to graphic picture or anything like that should be small. You want a small limited amount of text that clearly states the main point or maybe no text at all and just a giant graphic that you will explain when you talk about the slide. You are the presentation. The slide is a tool used to make your point. Well, what could be the problem here? We have a title. We have large font, just a little bit of font on here, a little bit of text on here, and we have a picture on here. What could be the problem or the common mistake in this slide? If you guessed bad color choices, you're absolutely correct. Avoid loud colors, garish colors. These are suitable for grade school presentations where you want to appeal to children not for professional presentations. The other problem is when you have certain font color on certain backgrounds, it makes it hard to read. A dark blue font on a black background or an orange font on a green background is very hard to read. Dark text on a light background or very light text on a dark background is absolutely the best. The other thing to avoid is colorblind combinations. There are people out there who might be watching your presentation who are colorblind, and they would find it very hard to view complementary colors, colors that are opposite on the color wheel on the same slide. So red and green, blue and yellow are hard to see and hard to read when you have them together. Avoid these color choices. 
professional PowerPoint presentation. We'll usually use conservative colors, light on dark or dark on light to create the maximum contrast without it being childish. Well, this is an interesting slide. What could be the problem here? I see a title. I see lots of pictures. There's not a lot of text on this slide. Write down what you think is a problem on this slide. If you wrote down that that slide was overwhelming, you're absolutely correct. There were too many pictures. They were not aligned or they were not grouped together. There were too many flashes and too much glitz and just too much going on. Use pictures, but don't let them use you. When you use pictures, you want to keep the slides simple. Too many pictures, too much text diverts the audience away from the content, away from you, away from the presenter, away from the message that you're trying to communicate. Your pictures should use the principle of alignment. They should be aligned together. Your text and pictures should also use the principle of proximity. Like things should be grouped together. There should be no more than three eye stops per slide three places that you want your viewer to look. You're in charge of that. By your design, you are telling the viewer where to look first, where to look next, and where to finish off. You can do this by using large or small. You can do this by putting something in the center, or putting it on the side. You can make something a focal point, a point of emphasis by enlarging it. Many different things that you can do. And we've talked about these principles before, the principle of proximity and the principle of alignment. Make sure that you use these principles also when you're designing slides. Above all, keep it simple. One or two pictures per slide, probably going to be enough, or one or two groupings of pictures per slide is probably enough. Pictures are great. A picture is worth a thousand words, but too many can be too much. Check out this slide. Look at all the fun things that are happening. Things are coming in, animation. Um, there are different uh, text that's coming in. It's flipping around. It's getting larger and getting smaller. Is this a problem? Write down what you think. There is too much going on in this slide. There were too many slide animations, too many things flying in and flying out. The attention of your audience should be on you, the presenter, and not on everything else that's going on behind you in your PowerPoint presentation. The slides are a tool to help you emphasize your point or to make your point, to put into graphics what you cannot always say with words, to create a mood. But when you have a slide like the one previous, it is too much. You want to remember the rule of repetition, the principle of repetition. Keep your slide animation simple. Keep it consistent. Use one or two animations, if you must, from slide to slide. Same with the transitions. Have the slides come in and move out in the same way. One transition for slides, one or two slide animations will keep your presentation consistent. It will make it clear by that repetition that these slides belong together. It makes it clear that they are part of one presentation. Keeping it simple, again, is a good rule. Have you ever seen this in one of your presentations? What do you think is a problem with this slide? And of course, when you're doing a slideshow, you know that if something can go wrong, it might go wrong. So one of the things to do before you are doing a PowerPoint or any kind of slideshow for that matter, is to make sure it works in the computer in which you're presenting. Perhaps you created your PowerPoint at home or your Google slide at home. You wanna make sure that it works at school that it hasn't transferred oddly, that it hasn't been a different version so it won't work at school, or that perhaps it might not work on your teacher's computer. It's always a good thing to test it to make sure that all the font and everything has converted over well. Uh, the other thing to make sure that happens properly is that you um, your links are working. So click on the links, make sure they actually work. Or if you're showing a YouTube video or something like that, you need to set it to make sure it actually works when you want it to work. So two ways of doing that, one is automatic timings, and the other one of course is to click on the link. And then it will, if the video is embedded, it will start right away. If it's not embedded, it will send you to the URL, to the address in which you can find that video, and then you can play it from there. But you wanna test that stuff and make sure that it works. Remember that if something can go wrong, sometimes it will. And always be prepared to the presentation without PowerPoint. Check out this.
dog. This is Harper, our daughter's dog. She just walked in and she jumped on my lap. And sometimes that happens. Unexpected things happen when you're in the middle of presenting PowerPoints. So you do want to make sure that you're always ready to present the PowerPoint without the actual PowerPoint working. Doesn't really matter. You want to take a breath and just keep talking and keep on presenting. PowerPoint is your tool. It is for you to use as a tool while you're presenting. You are the presentation. You should be making eye contact with your audience to engage them. You should also be asking questions and trying different ways to make sure that your audience stays with you. Don't just read what's on the board or what's on the slides. Often your audience can read that faster than you can actually read it out loud. Use a visual presentation such as PowerPoint as a starting point. Put in some cool graphics. Put in some pictures. Remember, a picture is worth a thousand words and a picture or an image can sometimes very clearly bring across your point. You also don't need to apologize for what's wrong with your presentation. If something goes wrong, you don't need to apologize. Take a breath and just keep on going. Everybody is going to have things happen every once in a while. And finally, make sure that you leave enough time for questions, especially if you're doing a professional presentation, uh, if you're presenting a project at school or in a future job, presenting some kind of concept. You make sure that if you have a limited time that you leave some time for questions and for answers. And we've come to our last slide. More presentation tips. Another thing to make sure is that your grammar and your spelling is correct. PowerPoint will put a wavy red line if you have a spelling mistake and a wavy blue line if there's a grammatical error. Be sure to check your slides and make sure it's all correct before you present. It's a little bit embarrassing if you're presenting a slide that has these obvious errors on it. Don't make too many slides. Keep it simple. Avoid the slide rush. What this means is you want this to be concise. A slideshow presentation is meant to tell a story. It has a purpose and an objective. Perhaps your purpose is to tell a story. Maybe your purpose is to persuade an audience. Maybe your purpose is to entertain. Or maybe your purpose is to teach somebody something. Whatever it might be, you want your language, you want the graphics on the presentation, and you want your actual presentation to be short, to be concise, and to be effective. In order to make it effective, again, we want to follow those four principles of design. One principle that we have not yet talked about in this presentation is the principle of contrast. That means when you have followed the principle of repetition, where you have consistent slide transitions, the way a slide comes onto the screen and moves out of the screen, consistent slide animations, the way a sentence or a picture might come onto the screen and move out of the screen, consistent fonts, size or style or type of font, consistent layouts, they might switch up a little bit, but you have the same background colors and the same colors on your screen, that can get very boring. So a way to change it up is to remember the principle of contrast. Contrast states that if you're going to make something different, make it very different, make it obvious so it does not look like a mistake. Make it obvious by changing it up completely and yet still keeping it somewhat consistent so it doesn't look totally out of place. This is really good to do in a PowerPoint presentation. Students, audiences become bored if your slideshow is too long or if you have everything too much of the same. And so contrast can be a, of a great benefit to you. The last thing is to cite your sources. I like it best to cite the sources at the end of a presentation. I find it awkward. It interrupts my flow when the sources are cited on each slide. If you really love to have your sources cited on each slide, a way to get around this is by using footnotes or reference notes, little numbers, and then you can tag those numbers at the end of the presentation with where you found the information. Finally, remember, keep it simple. Thank you.